Hi there, I'm Alex with Trans Audio Group, here today to talk with you about the Drommer MC7.1 monitor controller. The MC7.1 is a combination 7.1 and 5.1 surround, as well as a stereo monitor controller. Uh, it features a comprehensive set of mix checking functions, and it's all analog, so there's no worry of software crashes or need for firmware updates. It's also hand-built in Drommer's UK factory, just like everything they make, and it's got a pristine and transparent circuit design, as well as a rugged build quality. So let's take a look at the wide array of features. Okay, so let's start off by looking at the rear connection panel. For your surround inputs, you've got inputs A and B. Input A features a DB25 connector, as well as a paralleled through, which is an unaffected signal that could be, say, sent to a multi-track recorder. Then input B is a set of eight quarter-inch balanced inputs. And input C is a stereo input with a pair of XLR quarter-inch combi jacks. And you've actually got a fourth input, input D, on the top of the unit, which is a stereo 3.5 millimeter input. Then for your outputs, output 1 is for your surround, so eight quarter-inch balanced outs there. Output 2 is a stereo out, and output 3 is a mono or sub out. Now the MC7.1 does have a built-in talkback, but you do have the option to attach an external dynamic microphone here as well as an optional foot switch for your on-off. You also have an additional output for your talkback right here, which could be, say, sent to a set of speakers in the live room or back into another recording channel for quick track notes on the fly. Then over here, you've got a Kensington lock slot for added security. And over here, you've got your jack for your included power supply and power switch. When you're setting up the MC7.1, you have individual output level trims for speaker level calibration right on the bottom of the unit. There's also a quick reference wiring diagram here for the 25 pin D sub connection, and the supplied manual features more wiring diagrams, a guide to calibrating your system, and additional tips. Here we've got a sample diagram of a potential setup for your connections. Okay, so let's take a look at the top control panel. So on the top left, you've got your source select, and for surround, you've got your mode selection, so right now we're in 7.1, or we can quickly mix everything down to 5.1 at the hit of a button, which can be really handy. You can sum your all your surround signals down to mono, and that's gonna send a mono signal to all your surround outputs. You can uh, select your surround source here, which is your input selection, so surround input A or B. Then you have your stereo select, so you can sum the surround signal down to stereo. You can select stereo C or D. D is right here, the 3.5 millimeter aux input. Then on the bottom left, you have your surround control. So you've got eight individual latching switches for your surround channels, and these determine which surround input is active. And you can either cut or solo these. And this can be used in a variety of ways. And uh, here we've got the LFE selected, which would be the sub and we have it cut. So in this instance, we're gonna only hear all seven other channels and not the sub, or we can solo it to hear the sub only. Go back and forth, you can use this in a variety of different ways. Then on the right, you've got your stereo control section. You've got a band solo to solo the lows, mid, or high frequency bands. This can be used to check for issues at particular uh, frequency bands and check for unwanted bleed. Um, you can have these on in any combination you want, but not necessarily is it recommended to have all three on at the same time, as this may cause some issues at the crossover frequencies. And for this reason, if nothing is selected, the band solo circuit is completely bypassed. Then you've got a phase reverse. You can sum your stereo down to mono. You can swap the left and right sides to check for your stereo balance. Um, you can cut the left or the right to hear one or the other. Then you can also um, take your stereo signal and send it to the surround output, which is speaker one. Um, and in this case, you could send your stereo signal to the front left and front right speakers of your surround output. And that's nice because you have no need to rewire or have a separate set of monitors uh, for your stereo sound. Then you have your speaker selection here. So we have surround selected, or you can do your speaker two, which is your stereo output, and speaker three, which is that sub or mono output. Um, then up on the top right, you've got some level controls here. So you've got your aux input level. You've got your two built-in headphone outputs with controls here. Jacks are at the bottom front. 
Then on the top right, you've got your talkback gain control. It's for the built-in microphone, or you can engage your external mic right here. Uh, the talkback active is a non-latching switch here, or you remember you can also attach an optional foot switch. Then you have your master output section. So you've got a dim all, which is gonna give you a 20 dB reduction across the board without having to change any of your settings, or you can mute everything at the hit of one button. Then uh, you can have a level control set to be wherever this knob is at, or to a preset calibrated level. And that is adjusted with a trim right down at the bottom here. And that could be say sent to set to a industry standard um, level or maximum listening level. So you can quickly go back and forth between that or wherever the knob may be. Both the uh, master output and the preset level feature a high quality pod for excellent channel matching and smooth operation. All right, so thanks for checking out the Drama MC 7.1 monitor controller. As you can see, it's great for a variety of surround and stereo mix checking needs. For more information, check out the links below at transaudiogroup.com, drummer.com, and your local drummer dealer.